the technical direction there in the back is in the capable hands of Mike. So, Mike, the mic, please. Yep, we're all good. Excellent. Um, so, uh, attribution is the topic of the next session. Um, it's the largest panel we've hosted uh, here to date in the, uh, on the blue stage. Um, and we don't want to waste any time with uh, long introductions, so we're going to go straight into it. Um, attribution, savior or slayer of advertising. Hopefully, at the end of this session, we will have made up our mind which way we're going to go. Thank you. OK. Um, so uh, my name is Alex Cunell from Kantar Media. Uh, very honored to uh, be here and moderate the, uh, this illustrious panel of, kind of uh, specialists in their, in, in, in their field. Um, I'm German, so two things about that. One, I'm trying not to be funny. Secondly, uh, I know that in about an hour, people want to go for a drink, so we're going to keep it very short. Uh, so, uh, going to go to not trying to be funny, not good. Um, <laughs> the, why don't you just give a quick introduction who you are, where, where you come from? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm James Aiken, uh, co-founder, CEO of Exchange Lab. Before that, uh, founder of Media Brokers and founder of uh, Atlas Europe and had a long career in uh, the world of attribution from my days at Avenue A and third party ad serving. Hi everyone, uh, Ed Stevenson, Vice President of Sales and Customer Success at Abacus. We're one of the new kids on the block. Um, what we do is uh, make attribution and optimization easy uh, using software. Hi, Lucien van der Hoeve, responsible for uh, Market Share Europe. Market share is the key player, and the key global player, actually, in uh, attribution modeling. Hi, I'm Seth Richardson. I'm CTO of Rakuten Marketing. Uh, I've been worrying and um, working with attribution for, for nearly 15 years. Um, I founded VC Storm, uh, which was acquired by Rakuten Marketing last year. Um, I'm tasked at, uh, at Rakuten Marketing to, uh, to build the uh, attribution and technologies uh, to drive the Omni experience. So, uh, okay, so as, as you see, it's quite a, quite, quite a wide background, actually, or varied background uh, in the panel. So, so to make it easy for them, I'm going to ask a very simple question and see if they can actually agree. Uh, so how, how do you define attribution, and where do you think so far have been the key challenges? Well, Alex, I actually have attribution from the dictionary is the process by which individuals explain the causes of behavior and events, and essentially, as marketers, that's what we're trying to do in digital media. Understand how, for marketers, what are the KPIs? Can we drive people to generate thank you for buy pages? Can we have people successfully view ads? Can we drive clicks? So those KPIs are really set out by marketers. And, and you know, the challenge for us is figuring out what is driving this effect right now in the digital industry as, as, as more and more eyeballs come to the space. Yeah, I think um, there's the, uh, the, the dictionary definition yep. of attribution, but then there's also the, the business application of attribution, which is really what we're talking about today, which is um, I see it more as, as, a, as, a, as a pillar and a foundation to optimization um, and uh, really to help an advertiser understand and prioritize their day about what is and is not working um, across the, you know, the fragmented space that they're working in every day. Yeah, to add to that, I think attribution is not limited to digital, it's not limited to media, it's actually much broader. Everything that drives your business can now be made measurable, and input is what you put in, of course, and the output is what you get. Now, to optimize for the output, which could be sales, which could be brand value, which could be awareness, can be anything, this is where attribution comes to play, and it's much more possible to do this nowadays than it was 10 years ago. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, the, think 10 years ago, I think attribution was very much um, uh, thought of as a measurement, measurement tool for the, what happened in the past. And over the last few years, it's become much more of a tool of how to use that same data to be able to optimize the present. And going forward, and certainly start, we're starting to see that now, attribution is being used for helping us understand how our marketing budgets are going, to be, are going to be performed in the future and enabling you to be able to plan your budgets and, and forecast performance. Okay, interesting. The, I mean, o over the last, uh, and I remember kind of my, 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 uh, when I started working in, in, in online and digital a few years back, uh, as 
people talked about the XGPA mostly last leg attribution and maybe a derivative of that, which we, we all know kind of the, the industry, it's not ideal to say the least, uh, hence the, the industry is still using it. Uh, why is that? Yeah, I mean, it, to that question, I mean, it's, it, you know, we used to call it the rules of Fight Club back in 98 with Atlas, where once, you, you know, there's three rules, once a clicker, always a clicker, last ad seen and frequency of ads. And DFA and Atlas were both using that attribution process for all their campaigns. Many agencies adopted those technologies to help A, check and balance when they were serving ads into inventory on publishers to make sure they were actually served, but also being able to understand if it actually drove an action. Now those companies were all bought by, you know, Atlas was bought by Microsoft, now flipped to Facebook, DFA bought by Google, and they're all owned by big media publishers. Even the other new, more complex ones like Adometry and Converto by, by Google and AOL. So I think there's a real struggle right now because there is no independent agnostic attribution company that scales with the big agency hold cups. So it's a, it's a big challenge in the industry mm -hmm. right now. Well, I, know, I know a couple of companies that are still independent. <laughs> I work for one, by the way. <laughs> So it's important to be independent, that's what you're actually saying. Yeah, absolutely. I think it is important, I think, but, but I also think it's, it's as important to be completely transparent and that attribution in the early days had a uh, reputation of being this black box and very, it, it, was, it was trying to bring transparency to a fairly untransparent world, but it was doing it with a black box. And I think that over, to, over the last few years, th things have evolved there, which have meant that you, the transparency you put on top, top of data, regardless of the supplier, means that the, as long as they do provide that transparency with, the, with, the, with their technology, uh, means that um, you, you, can pick, you, can, you can potentially pick what would be a conflicted supplier in the past. Yeah, I think there's um, timeliness is, I think, a big issue uh, that we face as well, where the great thing about last event is that you know instantly um, what those are. Now, we, we all know about the flaws. Um, that are associated with it, um, as far as not being able to measure lots of forms of media. You know, we sit through a, uh, a session on, on video and viewability, and I, and I just think about the fact that, oh, how's that measured on last event, as far as these are all upper funnel type of activities. Um, but the thing for marketers <clears throat> is that they get the instant feedback on that. And I think today, and we still see it today, even um, you know, with quite a few theories of attribution at the moment, is that attribution, the frequency that you talk about is like monthly. It's, you know, um, and I think that this is something where, uh, you know, we need to evolve as, a, as an industry within attribution. We need to get to giving data in the same frequency as what you would get around last event. Because what we see is brands seeing a, uh, you know, an attributed report once a month, but then they go back to measure the last event for the other 29 days of the month. Yeah. Some, yeah. some brands even do it once a year, you know, and they use the outcome for the rest of the year with all the errors that are generated. But technology already facilitates, for example, daily or near real time attribution as long as you can handle it, but with programmatic buying, you don't need a person to handle that anymore. You just yeah. need some software. Yeah, but on, but on programmatic, I mean, that's Exchange Lab's sweet spot, is when we're, when we're looking at campaigns, you know, there's all these demand side platforms that also have pixels that they drop, and then they do algorithms on optimization, but the agencies or the advertiser might be using a third-party ad server to do their deduplicated conversions, like we used to have the Atlas Universal Action Tag. But what we need to do is look at all, everything that happens. So the halo effect of banners, you know, it's not just cost per click that comes through from Google on search, because once a clicker, always a clicker is still in effect. Yeah, and sure. all that value that's created from rich video executions to, you know, followed up with banners needs to be looked at. And I, I would challenge that a lot of marketers are relying on agencies to give them that data, and those agencies are still working with 10 year ago mm -hmm. attribution yeah. models, I, and we I, haven't yeah. stepped the game up. I agree, and I think there's been a massive shift in the market in the last, in the last couple of years. The, the biggest thing which has happened is the, is the use of multiple devices, cross-device activity, and the, and the use of, um, of mobile. And what, where you could probably uh, run an attribution study once a year and then use the results to start to wait, start to 
um, look at your reports and go, oh, I, know, I understand that report, I'm going to downweight it by 30% because I did this attribution study and that's how I'm going I'm to use that data. That just doesn't work anymore because the, the user's interaction across devices has made the, the user journey so much more complicated yeah. and that you need really solid technology which addresses that problem, the cross-device challenge, as well as the, um, um, the online to offline uh, behavior that is being encouraged by advertisers and brands. And not, to not to forget, competition is doing different things every day, and it also influences your attribution. The economy is changing every day, and for example, just simply the weather. I mean, if you're selling ice cream, yeah. you're Unilever, and you don't account for what's happening in, in that world, you you're, will be horribly off with how you spend your money based on your attribution modeling. Yeah. So that's why a day-to-day -day or maybe even real-time attribution for the areas where it's possible, like the digital world, should be combined with the slower world of buying TV and buying so print. But if you don't combine it, you're always wrong. <laughs> so, so you always be wrong anyway. <laughs> well, a model is better <laughs> than wrong, but anyway, if you, you can reach a 95% or 98% accuracy yeah. with the current technology and the current data. Yeah. And there's so, so, still a lot of competition. So, so, so what, what, what I'm hearing is kind of on the one hand side, we need to get more real time kind of uh, and the technology. I mean, it's like the, the, the capabilities to actually crunch data is now much better than it was five years ago or so. But the second one is also the, the not only multi-channel, but purchase behavior. I think Seth, yes, sure. we, we had a, a prep call uh, late last week where I started talking uh, things I, I haven't thought about. It's like click to buy in a shop or, or you, you click and then you actually go and collect and, and how, how, how does that actually get influenced. So it's very, uh, it's getting more complex. I think uh, uh, another thing that, that is obviously happening and, 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 and you, you know that probably better than others. So the, 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 the pro programmatic world, uh, digital, trying to attract more brand spending. Now we saw the previous session about viewability, it's just one of the topics. Uh, talk about that, but the, uh, if you now want to attract more brand spend in, or, or as a, uh, in digital advertising, and, and you talk about uh, things like uh, context, uh, yeah, design, and maybe viewability, how do you actually, I mean, this, get, this is an, another layer of complexity on top of that. How do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, cost per engagement and having the ability for marketers to see, you know, what the journey was for the users and then being able to optimize on, as, as my colleague said earlier, is crucial. But the challenge for the advertisers is, uh, I think a lot of marketers don't have that capability in-house. And they're using, they're outsourcing a lot of their attribution to other parties. And it's crucial right now for us to see that big brand budget have confidence in spending in a, in a new programmatic market that they have, they can prove that it's actually performing and driving actions mm -hmm. through engagements. And I think that's a real, real struggle because most of those media owners own all the attribution companies. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's, there's a couple of things on that as well. One is, um, you know, we, we associate, especially, um, you know, particularly in digital, the, um, you know, the brand-based spend, you'd normally associate it with softer metrics such as engagement or clicks or views or, or reach or other things like that. Um, and we actually see a lot of the time that's just due to not having a model that accurately reflects the value of, of brand advertising and, and understanding that as far as um, you know, you naturally have overlap between DR campaigns and branded campaigns as far as you're always reaching, you know, a similar audience or your targeted audience with different messaging. And it's really important to understand the valuation of each of those. Now, marketers, you know, the reason why marketers want to do awareness campaigns and brand campaigns is because they think about the concept of upper funnel. You need to make people aware of your product mm -hmm. uh, for them to be able to then, you know, want your product and then buy your product in the future. Um, you know, and then obviously being able to have this full funnel analysis and being able to see what that branding effect is, like what media are you buying? Are you reaching a new audience or are you meet, reaching an audience that you've, you already know about? So I feel that there is a difference here where as far as, you know, when we talk about brand, we do uh, run the risk of getting very close to a world where, where it's like, there, okay, there's true brand spend, um, but then there's also brand spend which is being bought for the purpose of reaching a net new audience in, in what we think is upper funnel. Um, and I think that where brands struggle today is that the ability to understand the, the effect uh, on something other than a soft metric and actually getting towards a hard KPI. Uh, and the interesting thing is, and I noticed that in many companies that 
and I'm just going to be rude here because I'm Dutch. Marketeers with a creative background, mm -hmm. they are a little bit like, they have fear for numbers and figures. And whenever we come in, they, they fear us a little bit. Not, not to talk about the media agencies, by the way, because they don't like us at all in the beginning. In the end, they like us. But then when, <laughs> when you show a marketeer that through this attribution modeling, he can get bigger budgets because you know, the company wants to hit targets and we can really prove that if you spend, let's say, five million more here or three million more there, you can hit your numbers that are in the budget here then they suddenly start to like you because they have something to present to their COO or CEO where they say, hey, don't cut down my budget. Mm -hmm. I need a little bit more money and then we'll meet the number of hectoliters that we are looking for or the number of cars we want to sell. And that's the interesting thing. But there's a lot of people that are really not so knowledgeable. If you look at marketeers with a more data or digital background, they really embrace it. They say, hey, mm -hmm. in the digital world, we understand everything, but these foolish guys that are often separated in the company doing the traditional media, they don't understand what's happening and they work with, well, old-fashioned tools to account for what they're doing. Yeah, uh, right. mm. it's, but I mean, it's becoming, it's the digital people are getting more and more responsibility. I mean, they look at the huge shift that's mm -hmm. happened since 2013, a $14 billion industry programmatic on an advertising industry of 530 billion. The next following year it went to in 2014 went up to 25 billion. It's going to be mm -hmm. probably 65 this year, and they're forecasting 125 next year. And that's because when automated trading begins, everyone moves to it because it's more efficient. And in terms of attribution and getting your brand out there, that's where the users are. They're not watching TV. They're downloading uh, creative ads, and as we saw with the Teeds earlier, that that's that it's on their mobile devices, and we have to go where they are. And I think that that monumental shift that's going, that's going to be 25% of all advertising is going to be in this automated fashion. Mm -hmm. Attribution is key. Yeah, and you need to I'm invest in attribution as a marketer because that is how you're going to reach your customers going forward. So I think if we don't, if for advertising, they need to take more of that responsibility in-house, not necessarily outsource the agencies and third parties, work with their DMP so that they can leverage and see what the opportunity is because there's so many opportunities out in the market. It's a symbiotic relationship though. I mean the, the data the data ownership's always been a um, been a question around the, your tracking data and media agencies have very often hung on to that. And I think over the last few years that's that relationship has really opened up. There's a lot more transparency now. Mm -hmm. And when what we're talking about here you you, there. you could I think there yeah. is. I think there is. We certainly work with. Um, we certainly work in a, uh, very often in a in a three three way relationship with the with the client, with the agency, with with us as the measurement yeah. partner. Same with yeah. And where we provide the transparency and we, we we any decisions we make around the attribution model and how we are valuing the individual channels, we we explain that. Yeah. And then we've we've done that with affiliates and we have changed affiliate payment models so that the um, so that affiliates aren't just rewarded on a last click basis. Based, and that yeah. was. That was yeah. bloody tough. You yeah. know? Oh, yeah. That was really tough. It's a big business but you, for you, 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 you change, um, you change that by trans uh, transparency yeah. and creating trust between the data, the people who understand the data, and then and, and bringing everyone along on that journey. And I think the really interesting thing that is is happening now is that is the the makeup of the uh, marketing department is completely different than it was just five years ago. The the skill required to be a digital marketer today is completely different. And the, spe the, the pace of change in terms of the, the, un the data scientists and people like, um, and analysts being able to understand what all this data means means that there's absolutely uh, there's room for, there's there's there's, um, as, there's enough food for everyone you know there's going to you're going to have in-house technology in-house skills and you're going to have outsourced um, expertise which is going to be brought together and the, the businesses which are going to win are the ones who are going to um, who are going to make that marriage work. I mean, yeah, and I'm happy to hear that. I mean, you've, you've preempted more. me a little bit the, 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 the last question here. The, the, so what, what, what we learned, I guess, is kind of something that was reasonably complex up to a year ago or so has become more, more complex because of brand spend, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It needs to become more real-time. There's proliferation of channels, right? So we have kind of th th three times more complex, if you, if you so want. So to, make, to try and make this uh, something concrete, so it's like one minute for each. What, what should a brand now actually do, right? The brand who is like, who understands now, hey, this is really getting ever more complex. How should I actually handle that? And then should I do this, for example, in-house, or uh, is this a strategic skill I need to, I need to own, or is this something I, uh, I can still leave 
it's I tied. Yeah, I mean, right. it, it's different strokes for different folks, and you know, it depends on you know, each individual is going to have a very different um, brief. And and as uh, Seth's saying, I think it's great if you can work with the agency and the advertiser. Mm -hmm. A lot of advertisers don't have you know, the cost there for that type of capability, and they, there is a need to outsource that. Yeah. So, but it is building that trust, and especially with the monumental change of automation, making sure that you get that right as the advertiser, I think is, is crucial for these trends right now. Yeah, I think um, brands want to do something about attribution, and it, it is high on the agenda, but at the moment, is that it's seen as, as, a, as a massive project. It's a big yeah. undertaking. It takes an awful lot of resource and, and how it changes. And I think that needs, to, that needs to change and it needs to be easier to do. Um, and I think that, um, you know, there's a, there's a couple of things that are required um, from that. One is, um, you know, I think the, uh, the software aspect of it as well, as far as I think that, um, you know, brands don't want to uh, be in a world where they're, you know, having teams of data scientists and things buried in the data for a number of weeks to figure out what happened six weeks ago. Um, you know, this needs to be real time, and I think that that's, a, that's you know, software's the answer for that. Um, and then I think the other thing as well is that attribution isn't something that you do off to the side of your business. You need to fully embrace it. Um, and, uh, you know, you need to consider and challenge your organization to actually think about something completely different from last event. There's that, you know, last event in itself is just an attribution model. Um, so, you know, there's, um, you know, while we're just sitting on last event, um, you know, we're kind of doing something wrong until we do something else about it. There's always, you know, um, and I think that that's what marketers need to do is just sort of tear the plaster off and, um, and take the leap. And, you know, that, that's when they'll start to see the rewards. Well, the, re the real value comes from what you can do with it. I mean, and that's where predictive comes into play. So the first thing is understanding what this what we see it normally. It's you know, the, the, the Fortune 500 companies are already embracing attribution. Don't worry about that. It's, it's more the mid-size and the smaller companies that are struggling with it a little bit. Maybe it's just our client base that gives me a bit of a bias. But the first thing is the understanding, and then once they start to understand, they need to change the way they're organized and the way they are handling their money and their budgets and the things they want to reach. Once they fully understand the capabilities of attribution modeling and the predictive capabilities, that's when the companies start using I mean, what, it. What, what kind of, you mentioned a number, I think, last week. What, what is the kind of increase you see in return on investment for yeah, someone the, the, embracing it versus the, the, not embracing it? <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of numbers. But yeah. You want to answer that one? Well, I think we'll all answer it slightly differently. It, it does, again, it does depend, but you'd look to, look to shift somewhere in the region 20 to 30% yeah. of media budget from underperforming channels to better performing channels. Wow. Now, that, which, is, which, is, which can have a huge impact. I mean, it has a double yeah. whammy that, that you're not spending money on a wasteful channel but, or, or wasteful media, but you're spending on, on performing media. But it will depend on each, each business. I, I, think the, I think, back to your original question, the, I, think the, the, I, think, I, don't, I don't think advertisers can have a choice to, but to embrace attribution technology. I mm. think that there's been some front runners in the last, uh, in the last five to 10 years who have in, invested very heavily in bespoke solutions and, and, in, and embro embraced the, um, the market uh, pioneers. But because of the, um, uh, the cross device, the user behavior has fundamentally changed. Everyone uses multiple devices when making a purchase. And just because of, just because of that, you can't, yeah, the, last click, the last click model really is, we've been predicting it for years that it's dead. Uh, or I have. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's half dead now. It's, it's, half, it's dead. half dead it's, at least. It's now. still a little bit alive. <laughs> It's slowly dying. Yeah, I mean, it's, and especially on mobile devices, you can't do any of the, you know, cookie attribution that we've yep. been doing for a decade. And if so you go, it really is changing. If yep. you go a bit broader, you know, that's your traditional media, you're out of home and that kind of stuff. Can you attribute that? Well, it's, it's very well possible. I think so in a multi-channel environment, yeah. it, it, and then you can't use last Some, some of our clients are yeah, spending double quit. the money yeah. on promotions, you yeah. know, the yeah. in-store promotion, like the trade budgets. They're normally separated departments at the moment. But it's, it's starting to integrate. And then the CRM data, you can put that in as well. So you can even optimize not for the channels anymore, but for your segments or for your uh, customers. So that's, this is the shift that we're seeing. And uh, I can predict that in two or three years from now, if we sit here again, we're mm -hmm. talking about channel optimization. And, and you're going to be bought by Google? <laughs> Maybe. Let's hope so. But I'm not sure whether I'm still sitting here. So, uh, well, yeah, Google already has again, a digital they bought again. So we're, we're, I think one of the. Um, uh, one of the things we hear a lot, and I'm sure that everyone hears, uh, hears this on, um, that are on the panel here, is that it's early for attribution, which, um, you know, there's, there's so many things that you see, in, you know, trends that you see in media, which just tells the complete opposite story to that. 
um, certain things like yeah, um, like the difference in CPMs between you know retargeting and prospecting is that generally you see that CPMs of retargeting is almost double that of prospecting. That makes no sense to me as far as the the inventory that allows you to reach a new a net new audience is twice the price of the ones that yeah. uh, that you're you're, you're getting paid for. Well, yeah, you're you're paid for. Yeah. It's um, you know, and then like we're seeing the stats on video, we're seeing the stats on you know on mobile, all, all of the things which are traditionally hard to track by last event are now the biggest things. Mm. You know, that's not something that you wait for. That's that is real and it's here and, and it's now, and last event just doesn't allow for that for those so, channels. Yeah, totally. The light just yeah. went yellow, which yeah. means we probably <coughs> need to. Uh, questions. Yeah, they said if we don't, if we're over time, they have a, he has a lever, and we will fall <laughs> into the stage. So we don't want to yeah, do that. Yeah, I think there is two, 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 go, uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah so, so uh, 30 seconds each, so go five or seven years forward. How will attribution look like at that time? I don't think we'll be talking about attribution. I think we'll just be talking about um, the, user, the usage, the consumer's journey, and we'll be thinking about how we engage with the consumer um, along that whole, that whole journey. Okay. I, th I think attribution will still be your word, like we have it right now, but it will be much broader than the consumer only. It will be more decision support in, in the total business. And not focused on media, not focused on marketing, but broader, because it's possible. And it's possible, it will bring value and it will happen. Okay. Yeah, I think five to seven years, probably a lot earlier than that, um, that uh, you know, the rise of, um, of creativity as far as uh, you know, bringing creativity and storytelling back, um, I think is gonna, be, is gonna be a big part of this. And, then I, and I do think that attribution will become um, you know, something that is just a standard, it's done on everything. Um, and then that allows, like if you think the amount of time that advertisers are spending and, and agencies are spending in Microsoft Excel trying to tie together different things and then finally they get to make a decision you know, as far as if all of that was taken away and they could just focus on great storytelling. Um, yeah. I think that's where we all hope this is going. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a desired behavior. I want, you know, I'm a marketer, I want them to behave in a certain way. And I agree with you, point of sale data needs to be in there. All data, all the mm -hmm. bottom line of the results of what's generated from the business, that's attribution. All, we'll have all these different components uh, it'll be measurable, tra trackable, and optimizable in real time. And I think we're going to make some good strides, hopefully. And hopefully, you guys don't get bought by Google or Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, with these words, I hope you find this uh, as informative and interesting as I found it. Uh, thanks, guys, for, for joining on that. Thanks, Alex. That's a good session. Very good, and thank you very much. Um, a uh, veritable who's who of attribution on the stage here. <laughs>